you know, seeking the Lord um, for the end of the year, leaving one year into the next, seeking His face as to what one one year, what it ends, and you know, have we fulfilled God what we were supposed to fulfill? Has God fulfilled what He promised to fulfill? And those are things that, for a pastor, I have to spend time in evaluating. But also, as believers, we're all called to really do that. To take, to take account of the seasons that we've come from. To determine if we've accomplished what we were to accomplish. If we've gotten to where we need to get to as we enter into the next season. And, 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 or, or are we still kind of carrying it over? You know, but that's important for us because that, that requires us to, 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 to build um, the disciplines of dialoguing with God. Right? Religion has, 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 has done such a great job of distancing us from God that we don't dialogue with Him. We talk to Him as if He can't hear us. Well, we, we talk as if He's, he's without, outside of arm's reach. right? But in reality, what the Word of God says is He's right there with us. He's closer than a friend. He's always there. And so it's important that we learn to dialogue as if we're dialoguing with each other. Because it's in that place of faith that we begin to hear the voice of the Lord, that still small voice that begins to speak to us and direct us and answer the questions or, or begin to bring clarity to the things that are upon our hearts. Are you with me? So as the Lord began to speak to me, uh, His desires of what He wanted to do this year, He had said that, uh, that this year, 2016, would be a year of expansion. And that, at the beginning, that's all that I had got. And I thought, okay, a year of expanding, a year of spreading out. Okay. Then as we got closer to the end of the year, and I kind of was hanging on that, oh, this will be a year of expansion, the more I began to pray about it, it became clear that the Lord was saying that I, this will be a year of expansion for the faithful. Okay, that adds a, a different element to it. Amen? See, he wants to he wants us to re, he wants to release an expansion upon either those that are already faithful or those that are becoming more faithful, right? See, we we and some of us we've come from different backgrounds where it's everything positive, as everything is yes, right? When that's not really with God, you know what I mean? Right. Not everything with God is yes. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's conditional. Yeah. If my people who are called by my name. Well, what's the condition? If. Right? If. He's not saying my people who are called by my name. They humble themselves and pray. And I hear them from heaven and I, I heal them. Right? That's, that's not what he's saying. He's saying first. If my people who are called by my name. Will humble themselves and pray. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear them from heaven. So there's like. We're seeing a process that we can only get so far with because then, then when we get to the when we humble ourselves, we fall upon our knees we turn from our sin, we turn from our wickedness then God will do X, Y, and Z right? it's a condition so what we have here today is we have very much the same thing that he is going to pour out an expansion upon the lives of the faithful of the faithful so what he's saying is, is that not everybody in the kingdom is necessarily considered faithful you understand? It doesn't make them bad. It just means that that's the revelation where they're at. They don't, maybe not, may not understand what is necessary to be truly faithful. Amen? See, it's important when God speaks to us for us to examine our lives to ensure that what He's called us into is being fulfilled completely. You know what I mean? It's not like he just tells us to do something and then we go out and do it. We kind of, we, we do our best. But then we have to stop sometimes and evaluate, where am I at? Am I at 60%? Am I at 70%? And then we keep going. We ask questions. We evaluate where we are, where we've been, and where we're going. But he says this year that he wants to bring that there will be an, exp an expansion. That word, expansion, what he is doing, what he wants to do, what he wants to expand in your life, that is a promise with me? Sometimes when God says things, we have to break down what He says and how He says it. He says He wants to bring an expansion. That's a promise. How many promises do you think are in the Word of God? Hundred? Thousand? Five thousand? Ten thousand? 
15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. It's about 33,000 promises. It's a lot of promises. Amen? Amen. And not every one of those promises is just a here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. Now that's a mess. That, that in and of itself is a system of belief. Name it, claim it. Blab it and grab it. Right? Blab it and grab it. But we can all testify that that, that type of mentality doesn't really work. I can't say I, that I want a Cadillac and I'm going to sit there and pray for a Cadillac and it's going to manifest itself. See, but for us this year, his promises, his, he promises an expansion. Expansion means the act of expanding or spreading out by force or by heat. Now, it's interesting when I looked at the definition, because I understand what it means to expand things with heat. But it's interesting when we think of God, that he does the same thing. He purifies with heat. He tempers with heat, Right? Metal expands and contracts and expands and contracts and expands and contracts. And if, if, if the metalsmith knows what he's doing, then he can temper the metal. If the metalsmith doesn't know what he's doing, then he weakens the metal. Amen? Am I talking to some engineering people who understand metal? Lynn? Gene? Right? You guys may understand that, that stuff a lot better than I do. But the reality is this. God does the same things with us. He heats us up. He pounds on us. He expands. He contracts and expands and contracts and it tempers us. Why? Because then the next thing we do for God, the weight that we're holding in the, in, in the, the realm of the Spirit, now is we're able more able to, to, to bear the weight because now we've been tempered for the next thing. Follow me? But what is God expanding? What is God expanding for you? He's expanding, and I'm saying this clearly for everybody to hear. He's expanding everything that could be expanded in our lives. He's, he is expanding everything that could be expanded in our lives. Everything temporal and everything eternal, God will be expanding this year. See, temporal means everything relating to the world, to our lives, to right now. Temporal means this time, this place, this space, right now. Eternal is without beginning or end. Lasting forever and always existing. See, God will be expanding things this year pertaining to us, but in our flesh, we attempt to define what would be expanded in our natural lives. Have you ever understood? You know what I'm saying? When God, when you hear something like that, immediately you start thinking, my finances, my health, my relationships, my jobs, my contract. Right? You think. You think that it's about this. Temporal. And it is to some degree. But this isn't what God's most concerned with. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be comfortable. But on the other side of the planet, somebody is happy and comfortable, but they don't live anywhere as comfortable as we do. You know what I mean? So really, God's not too much concerned about how well this is taken care of in this life. He wants us to enjoy it. But that's not really his, his, what his real drive is. Amen? Because he loves people who have nothing, and he loves people who have everything. Right? right? Yeah. And there's, no, there's no variance in between. Amen. Right? See, but all of those things, all of those things, knowledge and wisdom, all of those things will be increased in 2016. But what I believe God wants us to look at this morning is more of what does that look like from his eternal perspective. And then we do that I want us to look at that. I believe God wants us to look at that for one reason. And I found the scripture in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And it starts in verse 32. It says, And after these things the Gentiles seek. This is Jesus speaking. He says, For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. Jesus is trying to let, let, the, let the disciples understand that it's the most important thing we can do is seek God first. Because when we seek God first, all the stuff that we want to expand in our life, that's just a given. That's default. You understand what I'm saying? Everything that we do spiritually, if we're seeking the kingdom first, and that's our drive and that's our focus, then all the stuff that helps us, right? That helps us is a given. <coughs> Fighting a cold or a cough or whatever. 
See, God wants us to see the world we live in, naturally and spiritually, from an elevated perspective. He wants us to see things from up above the goings-on of the world. He doesn't want us to focus on everything that we can see temporally. He wants us to see things from his perspective. Because when he sees things from the top of a mountain, he sees where you left in your house, and he sees where you get to in work. He sees the path between. And that's in every aspect of our lives. He wants us to be able to see things from there. He doesn't want us to see everything from the perspective of driving on the road. You understand what I'm saying? So when we become, when we get more focused on the heavenly side of things, we begin to see things from a different, a different angle, but we see more of its completed form. You with me? See, when we do that, that causes heaven to invade earth in our lives. You understand what I'm saying? It causes the things of the kingdom begin to invade the things of this world in our personal lives and begin to change them and, and radically shift them. Sorry, I kind of lost my place. <coughs> wow, that's nice. Now, <coughs> along with this promise to expand, <coughs> thank you. He says that this promise is for the faithful. That means that first we have a promise. Now he says, but the promise is for the faithful means now we have a condition. Right? Just like the other scripture I referenced. If my people. It's a condition (coughs) for the faithful. This means the expansion comes with a condition. This is what, uh, this, that is, if you're found faithful, God will surely expand everything pertaining to your life, physically and spiritually. Amen? See, God's not into lip service, right? He's not into just telling you what you want to hear. He's not just into, uh, sugarcoating things to make you feel good. He's not feeding us a life, a, 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 a diet of donuts and cotton candy. Right? He's faithful. He doesn't give empty promises. He doesn't use the gift of charm to woo us. Right? He's the God who rewards those who through diligence seek Him. Yes. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, Without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is And that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He rewards. He rewards those who have eternal perspective. He rewards those who seek the kingdom. Amen? Faithful. Faithful. But what does it mean to be faithful? What does faithfulness mean to you? What does it mean to you when when, when you think of the word faithful? And we all would have different definitions, but they would all sound pretty much the same. Amen? We would all have a a fairly solid definition of what it means to be faithful. But I believe that I found a, a definition hidden in the Word today. What it means to be faithful. And what He's saying to us this year. So turn to Matthew chapter 25. I'm trying to move quickly this morning, I know. Adriana has only a window with the young ladies next door. But starting in Matthew 25, starting in verse 31. Jesus is, 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 is he's, he's going through a discourse of parables. And now he comes to a, a, another parable here. It says in verse 31, And when the Son of Man comes in His, in all, in his glory... And all the holy angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand. But the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand. Come. You blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. 
I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did unto me. Then he will also say to those in his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. And I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. And I was a stranger, and you took me, in, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he, then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do to one of these least of these, you did not do to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. See, we see Jesus describing the final judgments when He judges mankind. He separates the sheep from those who refuse to be led. Goats are not led. Goats are driven. They're not led. So He separates them. Those who are rebellious, He puts them on His left side. But He brings the sheep of the Lord on His right. Then He addresses those who He beckons. I love that. It's the King. Stretches out his hands and says, Come, you blessed of my Father. Well, who are they? The faithful. The faithful. What makes them faithful? Right? What makes them faithful? What does it mean in Jesus' mind here to be called faithful? To be called blessed of my Father. Those means to feed those who are hungry naturally and spiritually to refresh those who thirst to love and to make room for strangers to clothe those who are naked to have compassion upon the infirm to encourage and set free those who are bound naturally and spiritually that's who God finds as being faithful doing the work naturally and doing the work spiritually amen See, when we're more heavenly perspective, or when we are more eternally perspective, it's easier for us to look past all the stuff of the world. What's going on around people, right? If I'm so concerned about someone's filth, this or that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to minister to them. And in, the, in Christ's mind, who is the person sitting there on the street corner on the gutter? Him. Him. See, then from verse 37 to verse 40, I love that the pure, undefiled religion is shown through the most faithful subjects. Amen? Faithfulness isn't an attitude or a personality. It is the power of God that transforms us into His image and likeness. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Being faithful isn't just an act or an attitude. Being faithful is the power that will transform us. See, if we're doing everything... With a heavenly perspective, uh, a per, heaven, per, heavenly perspective, perspective upon the people we minister to, because he's talking about people, ministering to people. Our heavenly perspective will change us because we're not seeing the person in the flesh. We're seeing God's heavenly perspective. We're seeing God's purpose in the lives of the person that we're ministering to, or our ministries as a whole, or our families as a whole. I'm telling you, this week. God did a lot of expanding in my thinking processes about how He works, how He's, how He's righteous, and how everything falls into play when we allow Him to do it. See, there are people, multitudes of people around the world, 
that don't have what we have. And when I say that, I mean they don't have a place to worship in. They don't have the Word of God to, to chew on every day of the week. They can't. They could can be killed for it. So they receive with hunger a revelation from somebody who has the wisdom to, to teach them. Then they take that revelation as simple and as childlike as it is, and they go out there. And they just apply what they knew. Right? They're saying, I don't know everything else, but it doesn't matter. What I do know is this, and I'm going to apply this to my life. And what happens? People are being radically transformed. People's lives are being radically changed. And it's not because of the people, what they know. It's because of how little they know. It's because of that grain of sand of faith that they have. You understand what I'm saying? They get out there and they apply what they've learned and God does radical things. And it's not because they're pedigreed or PhD'd or theologians or they've gone to all these seminaries. They don't know anything naturally. But man, spiritually, they make things happen. Amen? Because they are faithful. See, God looks for the faithful. And when He finds somebody who's faithful, He has no guile in their heart. They're not shooting for for promotion. They're not looking for their ministry to be acknowledged. They're not looking anything within themselves. But they're faithful to serve God. And what happens? Man, he'll pump everything he can for people. He'll line up the most uneducated person with the richest man who just flies in with his jet, sees what he's doing, and dumps millions of dollars into something to make it happen. Because of the person's faithfulness, not because of what they know. Amen? Hebrews says that God is ever faithful. Amen? Amen? And because of that faithfulness, we also must remain faithful. Right? Luke chapter 19 and verse 17. Jesus says, well done, good, good servant. Because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. That's kind of a, that's kind of a cool promotion. Have authority over ten cities. That's pretty big. Can you count ten cities in this region and say, now you went from just being faithful with a little bit of money, and now the guy says you're that faithful? You're going to govern what? Corona, Riverside, Elsinore, Temecula. I mean, come on, we're talking ten, ten cities in this area. That's big. And that's just an analogy, right? Faithfulness produces multiplication. Remember that. Faithfulness produces multiplication. You are faithful with a very little. And since you were, yeah, govern ten cities. Right? See, when we remain faithful, God will ever expand the authority of our oversight. Ever expand the, the, the governance that He's put before us. He's abundantly, he abundantly will multiply beyond uh, anything that we can accomplish of ourselves. See, He's only looking for the faithful. Right? He's only looking for the faithful. Those who will feed the hungry. Those who will refresh those who thirst. Those who will love and make room for strangers. Who will clothe the naked. Who will have compassion upon the infirmed. Who will encourage and deliver those who are bound. Those are big shoes to fill for us in 2016. You know what I mean? It doesn't sound like much, but it is. It is, it is quite a calling. That He wants to expand our lives. He wants to expand our ministry. He wants to expand our everything about our lives. He just requires our faithfulness. Amen? He doesn't require our finances. He doesn't require our, 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 our anything that we would have to give of ourselves to, to be able to accomplish. Right? We don't have to pay Him to receive from Him. Right? Like Simon. Oh, I'll give you money. You can give me this anointing. Right? See, are we willing to take that challenge? Because we have to remember that expansion is only for the faithful. And I'm saying this a lot for a reason. Because I really want to sink it home to us. God wants to expand us. But God wants us to be faithful in order to do it. Yes, amen. Amen? amen? It's pretty easy. You know what I mean? It's not a sugar-coated uh, prophetic word that we just all grab a hold of it. Hallelujah, it's going to be a year of explosions. You know, a year of whatever. 
Now, there are years of Jubilee where it means God's blessing and it's a party and He's going to pour it upon us and it's going to be a great time. But that's not this year. Maybe for you personally, but for what God's saying to us, He wants some faith, but He wants faithful people. And I'm not trying to say, please hear me. I'm not questioning faithfulness. This is really about us as individuals and God. Amen? See, not for the goats who say that they know Jesus, but they have no credit with God because they've not been found faithful. You know what I mean? You've got to remember something here also. He's referring to goats. He's not just referring to mankind, this the lost world. He's referring to people who know Him. He's referring to people who know Him. He says it in the Word there. I want to find it. He says, here we go, verse 44. Then they also will answer Him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? The world doesn't minister. The world ministers to itself. You know what I mean? When I was in the world, I ministered to myself. Right? I took care, good care of myself. Right? The world doesn't minister to me. I minister to myself. So these are people that ministered to the Lord, that were minister, were ministry minded, but they had no, there was nothing within them that showed them being faithful. So God said, no, you're actually a goat. You're rebellious. You're self seeking. You're self seeking. You talk the talk, but you have very little walk that sounds like your talk. You know what I mean? You're saying one thing, but your feet are saying something else. Right? Stand with me this morning. I'm done. I want us to look at something. I want us to look at something before I close. And if we could pull that up, it's First Chronicles 4:10. We, those of us who've been around a while, we know this prayer. But when I, when it came to me, when this began to come to me, this came back to me. And this, I believe, is what's going to help us to be more faithful. And I'm not going into a prayer, prayer of Jabez thing. I don't want us to. I think it's a great prayer. I think that it shows a lot about a pure-hearted person who cries out to God some very pure requests. And when it all said and done, God says. You got it, right? You're faithful with a little, have ten cities. So Jabez called on God, on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. We all want that. We pray that. Can we all read this? Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Pure hearted prayer. And God expanded him. See, God wants to expand us, but he wants a pure hearted person who's just pure of request, pure of petition. God, I'm nothing but you're everything. Keep your hand upon me. Keep me from evil. Bless me. Right? And when we, when we, when we come to him and we, we position ourselves that way, all of a sudden, he's like this. Yeah, sure. You got it. You got it. You got it. God is gracious. He's sweet. He's kind. He doesn't talk to us. He doesn't talk to us as if he is somebody so great. He will bring himself down to our level to communicate. It's like talking to that little baby. Yeah. I can't talk to her like I would talk to my my sons. She wouldn't understand it, but she would she would cringe if I talked too abruptly with her. You coo her, you talk funny, I talk like grandpa, I sing lots of songs. <laughs> I do. I'm not lying. Right? She, she recognizes it and she smiles. Yes. You know, the last thing we would ever want is God talking to us in such a way that would be thundering and yeah. fearful and scary. Right. But He doesn't. He talks to Lex the way, exactly the way she needs to be talked to. And Raven, the exact way she needs to be talked to. All of us. Right? I believe that that prayer will reveal a lot if we. Uh, remember it, please. 1 Chronicles 4.10. And just look at the simplicity of it. And, and, and let that prayer kind of be organic and pray from that vein so that you can kind of see where, what God wants from you and what you want from God and express it in that simplistic way. Amen? See, it shows the type of follower that God can honor and expand His greatness through. That's really what that shows. It was just a guy who wanted to do something good. You know, this guy is not mentioned anywhere. He's nobody. Nobody really even knows who he was. He was just the son of somebody. But that, that, but God said, no, that needs to be in here. Right? He's kind of an insignificant guy, but that's powerful. It needs to be here. One whose heart is not defiled. 
desiring God's greatness and wanting only God's uh, uh, presence as payment for all that we do. Father, bless your people today, Lord. Lord, we are, we are in 2016. And we are a people, Lord, who want your promises to be manifested through our lives. We want all 33,000, Lord, to be manifested in our lives. The ones that are conditional, the ones that are unconditional, we want all of them, Lord. We need your help to make sure that we're navigating in the right direction to have them fulfilled. We thank you that many have been fulfilled, many have been fulfilled multiple times, and many will be fulfilled more multiple times. I thank you for that. But Lord, I thank you also for the promise of this year that you spoke to us, that you will expand, that you will bring expansion to the faithful. Father, I pray you find us faithful. We can't say we are, Lord, only you can. But I know, Lord, that if we have our heart in the right place, if we look to you as the author and the finisher of our faith, if we come up with a, with, to, to places in the realm of the Spirit uh, with, with elevated sight, God, I thank you that you will be faithful to say those words to us as you so faithfully will say to your sheep to enter into your rest. Oh, come, you blessed of my Father. Wow. Wow. That means Jesus sees him coming, and he knows in the back of his mind he's already had a conversation with his Father. They're going to come, and they'll be the blessed of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your people here. I thank you for the blessed of the Lord. All of us here, Lord, are blessed of you. You brought us all together for a time such as this. Your, your glory is calling unto glory. Your deep is calling unto deep. And so I thank you, Father, that as we embrace 2016, that as we do all we can do to be faithful in your sight, you will expand our lives. You will, just like this man, James, you will expand his territory. You will expand the, the influence. You will expand every aspect of our lives, Father, because of one simple reason. We want to serve you. We want to love you. We want you to keep your hand of goodness upon us and not call us, cause us or help us. Help us to not fail. Help us to not sin. Help us to run this race as fast as we can, Lord. Lord, you are the bread of life. You are everything that we have need of. And I thank you that this year will be a year of that manifestation. I thank you, Lord, that in the, in, in, in the ovens of our life, I can smell bread cooking. So I give you praise. I thank you for all your goodness. Bless us as we go. Bless us as we put our, whatever we put our hands to. Keep your hand firmly upon us. We love you and we praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name.